Women Innovators. Interviews with women with big messages and big missions, sharing their stories to inspire you to live your passion and step up to make the world a better place. Here's your host, Tammy Patzer. Hi, this is Tammy Patzer, and I'm really happy to introduce today's guest, Catherine Suisse. Catherine is a natural-born healer with the gift of healing that provides an opportunity for someone or something to connect with the divine of their understanding to harness life force more readily, efficiently, and dynamically. Her gifts have been validated via preclinical scientific research using both cell-based and mouse models to suggest benefits for overall health and well-being and improved quality of life. She is a highly experienced, inspirational, and successful registered nurse who has served in the areas of holistic health and wellness, mental health, aging populations, and energy healing, and body-mind therapeutics. Her drive and curiosity led her to study the health and human science as well as deeper forces inherit and between all things. In 2010, she encountered Guruji Mahendra Trivedi, founder of Trivedi Incorporated and Trivedi Effect. She recognized the Trivedi science as a culmination to her lifelong journey to understand and experience true healing. Welcome, Catherine. Oh, thanks, Tammy, for having me back here. Thank you. Good to be here. Just the other day, you and I both were lucky enough to hear a, a doctor who was involved in the, um, let's see, mango experiments and cashew experiments and ch- chickpea experiments which were documented heavily with um, scientific evidence and photography showing the Tribeti effect in action. And so today, um, we actually are very interested in talking about um, the divine and science and how human beings can um, harness this divine energy or, or life force energy, authority energy. So, Catherine, you are a, a registered nurse. You have many years of health background, and you also have this very keen interest in the scientific connection between science and the divine, and of course, humans, human health. So can you tell me a little bit more about what your thinking is related to science and the divine? And I know, you know, we had a little bit of a pre-chatter about it. It's a very exciting topic because I, in my opinion, I think human beings are predisposed to believe in a higher power. So let's just jump off from that, you know, and you can agree or disagree with that. But I really do believe that our brains are designed to help us to make sense of our world and to help us to understand that there is a higher power. What do you think about that? Uh, Yeah, I absolutely a hundred percent agree with that one, Tammy. Uh, Our, you know, if you look back in the course of history, there was always something that the human being uh, brought before them to uh, hold in high regard and to hold in uh, deep surrender to or ask things from or somehow attempt to harness the good graces of whatever they called it. Uh, There were effigies made of it. it. Sometimes it was just the sun or, you know, we see this throughout all of history, that attempt for uh, moving towards something larger than themselves. Um, and currently, you know, in my life, I was raised in a, in a, in a uh, family, you could say it was a religious family. Um, and I, you know, as a young child, I began to question a lot of things because the constraints of man-made religion, I, being a hypersensitive, I was able to kind of 
feel what didn't feel right with some of the language, some of the practices, some of the nuances of uh, relational dynamics there. Um, and so I began to question that in my own quiet little way. And as I grew and came into my profession as a nurse, I knew that my nursing education, which was very good, um, uh, gave me a basis of understanding the, uh, the you know, f- f- health and well-being in a human and how to care for a human. But in reality, it did not answer the deepest questions for really what made people well and get well from disease. So I, at an early age, and even before I finished nursing school, I was already exploring different things. So my, I know that my search for that deeper meaning or that deeper understanding of what truly allows for a flowering of a human being has been a lifelong scenario. And, and, and I've had some very good teachings and exposures and beautiful mentors and, and, and teachers come through my life on that. And when I met Gorji, uh, you know, for me, I, I think I talked about this previously. I, it was like, wow, home ground, home base. I found my tribal tribal leader here. <laughs> he he became my Gorgi in a way, and I I uh, in in a sense that here was a man who was a scientist who had a deep, passionate gift that he held in deep esteem as as give as a divinely gifted being to want to cultivate this, nourish this gift, care for it deeply, and share it only in the way he's being directed by. And so I, being very fortunate, along with, you know, many other people, got to be involved in some of this science. So there's a lot to talk about there. But back to this this piece about Dr. Jardel, we, we, what Tammy was, uh, what you're talking about, uh, this interview conversation, Guruji was, uh, b- blessed to have him in the studio out in, uh, where we had the webinar on Saturday. And Dr. Jardel was present in the earlier days of Guruji's very heavy scientific ex- experiments with agriculture. And this man, Dr. Jardel, is, is one of the most esteemed agricultural scientists on the planet and actually was asked by the United States government and was chosen one of three of the top people in India to come out and work for this government. So he, he, was, he is held in very high esteem. And the beauty about Dr. Jardel is that he grasps the deep, uh, awareness that there is a, uh, an authority of all of life. You know, he's a scientist who says our job is not to question is there authority or, uh, you know, question Guruji's miraculous capacity because the results were outstanding, which we'll discuss in a minute, the implication of those results. But he said our job as scientists is to discover w- how do these miraculous changes happen in these plants? Given the the uh, life force transmission of you know Guruji Mahendra Trivedi, so whatever this potency, this gift from the divine that Guruji has, he he worked on um, uh, cashew tree uh, populations and also uh, which a uh, chickpeas and then mango trees, and so there's beautiful pictures which. There will be a replay of this workshop, and people will be able to see these before and after pictures, which speak more than a thousand words each picture. Um, One of the most miraculous things about them is that the increase in chlorophyll B, and I know this is technical, but just know that we all know what chlorophyll is, is what makes a, a plant green. It's, it's how a, what a plant uses. It has chlorophyll A or chlorophyll B. And what the plant uses to be most vibrant uh, is, is the ability to uh, gain, have a certain ratio between chlorophyll A and chlorophyll B. And in the usual plant, the unblessed plant, there's a three to one ratio. There's more chlorophyll A to one part, three parts to one part chlorophyll B. 
Well, when Guruji blessed these seeds and these crops grew, and Dr. Jardin explained, he said, I w- he would go every three months and go look at these groves and just to see and take pictures and see how the, the plants were coming along and, and, and how they were growing because you have to give it growing time. He said, I, one of those times he describes coming out of the car and, 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 and looking and he said, oh my God. And in his own way, he's, he's a very beautiful man. He said, what happened to that? my mind in that moment? I cannot, I cannot put it to words. <laughs> in other words, his mind was blown because of the vibrancy of the blessed, the blessed plants versus the unblessed. And what that, when they broke it down and took it into uh, rigorous laboratory testing, what they found is that the chlorophyll B had surpassed the chlorophyll A, and chlorophyll B is what allows that plant to keep harnessing from the sun the life force. So in other words, the Trivedi effect transmission is able to boost the object of the blessing or transmission, boost the capacity to open to uh, the connection with the giver of all life. I mean, whatever you call that. So you could call that God. We here scientifically in the 3D, we say the sun is what brings life to this planet, the light of the sun. But then you go on and the physicists would say, well, what is beyond the sun and what is beyond that and what is beyond that? And what is what, you know, we go into subatomics and what is beyond that and what is beyond that? There's life that's existing eternally in all directions. So we call that God. We call that intelligent life force directing life. God. Uh, and so what this chlorophyll B uh, uh, exponentiating in these blessed plants, Dr. Jardel said two things about these plants that were very practical outcome for food supply and for uh, being successful in business if you're growing these plants. He said, one, you're getting a hardier plant with more chlorophyll more more life force in the plant because they ran some of these the fruits of these plants um, through uh, what they call biophoton uh, 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 checking like tests where they could they could check how vibrant is the biophotonic field what we call the biofield around these plants and around the fruits of these plants and it was like three hundred times more. Uh, a, a vibrant and strong emissions of biophotons coming off of this these these plants. Um, so uh, number one, so you have increase, so you have strengthening of life force in in these plants, and then you have longer shelf life. In other words, these cashews they produced. Uh, the oils that are in cashews usually have a certain shelf life before it goes rancid. Well, the cashews in in these uh, uh, plants that were blessed were 10 times slower in degrading the, these, the oil from these plants. So what that's saying is that there's longevity and vitality. So w- if you extrapolate that into human health, because it goes the same for humans, the life force transmissions um, from the Trivedi effect or from the healers who have been um, marinating in in Guruji's blessings and are now scientifically validated healers with impact to change molecular structure similar, what you see is that the impact on human health and well-being is basically that, longer shelf life, more vitality. So you could break that down in terms of, you know, disease populations or different disorders. And, and currently, many, many of us have been seeing impacts not only in our own life and the ripple effect that comes from just living around us with our family or close people, but I have been able to see that ripple effect with working with a group of uh, co-workers at work in a facility or, you know, sometimes I go into a facility and there's a lot of people there with different disorders or different stages of um, aging, you know, anxiety states, dementia, 
a pain, chronic pain and a lot of other disorders if you look at their list of diagnoses. And um, these are community-based living centers. So I get to see them in their day-to-day life and interact with them a lot. And often intervention just by me spending time with them, seeing them consistently and evoking something, doing blessing on them is already a ripple effect. Even if we're not in any formal formal contract for, for me giving them blessings, it's and that's how I feel when I'm around Guruji. When I sit around Guruji and he's giving a discourse or we're eating a meal with Guruji, the ripple effect of just sitting in his atmosphere is also impacting me and everyone around them. I can see people walk away. So imagine, you know, the exponential effect when one would receive a transmission. And some people, some of us are calling this biofield transmission because technically that's the name of it or a blessing. Some people are calling it or some people call it a life force transmission. And that is highly impacting a state in a human being to be able to be calmer, sleep better have decreased inflammation, which is at the bottom, you know, stress and inflammation are two big culprit operational things going on, underpinning several disorders across the board that are chronic and degenerative. Um, For myself personally, I have over these eight years with Gorgi, I have experienced, you know, just an increased capacity to mentate, to think, to have rigor, to focus, to endure long periods of absorbing and processing information, which is really helping me now as I'm developing a website or, you know, writing or even learning new things because I'm constantly learning as a nurse. Um, What I'm also noticing is, because this is a twofold, it's a relationship. And the relationship is, as a human being, when we receive life force transmission, we go into deeper connection and relationship with the life force, which is God basically gracing us with life force, okay? A boosting of this life force that begins to create molecular changes in us that begin to affect our organ function. And in our body-brain mechanism, we have decreased, um, decreased uh, um, uh, what we could say, like disorders of how our organs function so that our brain chemicals balance out. And we have less anxiety, less fear of the future, um, more a strength of choice of being able to make clearer judgments, have clear clarity about um, being able to um, ass- assess our environment to say, this no longer feels good to me. I'm going to let this go, or I need to embrace more of this in my life. So it's like helping us become better custodians of our own um, body brain mechanism, our own journey through life in relationship to what we call natural law. You know, plants, if you look at how a plant works in the cells, the plants, they're very, we call collaborative, communicating. They live in community. They each do their job. They support the next one and the next little uh, cellular structure supports the next one to flow and they work in harmony. That's called a healthy plant. But if one of those structures started to go cattywampus, or if somehow the light got dimmed and and the the cellular integrity, the cells uh, uh, in the lining of the cells stopped functioning and started to let in kind of molecules that were not helpful for the the, um, functioning of that cell, There's going to be a journey in that cell to try to kick that thing out. So even in nature, nature does not abide what is harmful to it. It'll kick out toxins very naturally. And as human beings, often we get caught in our uh, egoic 
um, ideas about what's right and wrong. And we care, we care too much about being right or being okay for someone who doesn't reject us, or we don't want to upset people or upset the system. So we don't say anything and we just allow toxic people or situations to go on in our life. And eventually we're the loser. We're the loser, and we what starts happening is our vitality starts going lower. Our, our happiness quotient, we begin to have sleepless nights, or we begin to have a discord in some other areas of our life. So for me, this whole question of God and being a healthcare practitioner, I was discussing with you, Tammy, uh, recently, uh, where I'm... I'm looking at like, how would I love to bring this message forward to uh, not just people in general, but to other healthcare practitioners? And I thought, wow, I know that so many other healthcare practitioners secretly harbor this question within themselves. Like, what am I allowed to talk about? with my clients, with my patients, with my colleagues in healthcare about the nature of the divine or the nature of, you know, the author of life that it has, has the ability to make miraculous change. There's certainly a lot of stories documented in modern history with miraculous healings. Yes. Um, and, you know, if you think about what you just said, that that is a, a a really good question to bring up because there are many healthcare providers um, out there, and that could be you know home care people helping somebody at home. It could be a doctor. It could be a nurse. It, I mean, there's so many people that fall under that category. So, what conclusion did you come up with about that? About what is okay to talk about, and how do you talk about it in a way? that um, people are open to it. You had talked about the ego earlier and about how your ego obviously is always trying to protect you. And then of course there's the soul part of you. So what conclusion did you come up with um, as far as um, being in the healthcare profession and discussing these types of topics? Well, one of the, um, one of the f- fail safe ways and i and i think i would like to say i i seek to become more elegant in in this way of expressing myself for you know so when i say elegant i mean simple clearer more succinct and it kind of can, can take you into the poetic a bit um but in reality nature is such a great example. So even if we begin to teach uh, our clients or discuss health in terms of a, we're holistic systems, you know, which implies, and we, we imply that we have biofields, which means we have extended fields of energy that move outward. And ultimately what physics says is, is everything is connected to everything and that we're basically light. So, you know, we can pull all of that in to a discussion, but we want to keep it simple from the average consumer of healthcare. Usually people tend to think of themselves in pieces and parts and it's my sciatica, my pain, you know, my heart and liver, my liver disease it's an ownership of a part that's not functioning well. Well, the reality is a liver doesn't go bad by itself. It's not struck from a, you know, an alien from outer space. It happens from within a system that is not functioning well. So if we really look at what is the basic of health and we look at basic things with our clients, which more and more doctors are beginning to do in really intelligent doctors and nurses and and, and healthcare practitioners of every level saying, what's your stress level like? The psyche and the emotions, okay? What, what's going on in your world? You know, what, what's stressing you out? Are you sleeping? Uh, you know, certain things like that so that we can begin to see, first of all, with just within the body-brain mechanism, where's stress, where's inflammation, 
where where is their digestion which is very central you know where is that out of whack because it's all interconnected the brain the gut the the immunity it's all interconnected so what when we are looking at this thing called god or the divine the divine aspect of our life and the fact that we have life from somewhere um we say, well, what is it that, that we can do to kind of reclaim that connection with the wholeness of our being? Not just our body parts, but what is, what is moving? And this is where we bring in the subject of consciousness. It's like, what is the part, who, who is aware of me speaking right now? What's the part of you that's aware of you talking about your liver or your pain. Just take a moment. And oftentimes it's just walking through helping a person become aware of the next level up or the next level deep, however you want to say that. So so once they begin to feel uh, safe enough to do that and that they're not it's not about a religion. No one's talking religion here. We're talking science. You know, consciousness there's a lot of science out there that points to its existence and how it functions. There are, you know, uh, stress and inflammation. This is all holistic biofields. This is all part of it. But the piece about God is this, is if I'm in relationship with this, this force, this intelligent force, how can I go into deeper relationship with it how can I become available for more benefit from it, just like those cashew trees or those mangoes? How do I increase my shelf life? Well, what did those trees do? They took a blessing and they ran with it. They, they just got out of the way and they just connected and they kept harnessing and harnessing and harnessing. For the human being, what that means is we have to align ourselves with the laws of nature. And with that, it means simple things like, um, you know, becoming aware of our environment, uh, closing up holes that are leaking in our relationships or in how we eat and how we spend our day. How are we being wasteful with our life force? Is it leaking out somewhere? Are we wasting our time, our money, um, our sexuality, which is life force? Um, who am I, you know, what am I rubbing up against? Who am I allowing deep into my circle? Um, how am I spending my time? That's also life force. Time is, is, a, is kind of a gift for us here in the 3D so we can make sense of our world as we move through this third dimensional world. Time helps us measure things and notice difference so that we can evolve or not, you know. For the human being, we have choice. And, and in making that choice, it implies responsibility. And where the ego comes in is the ego says, no. No changing. This is not what we want. You're disruptive. And we're saying from, from a higher point of view, nature says, oh, yes, my love, disrupt we will because we want to live. We want to have more shelf life. We want you to kick out that friend who is a parasite, who no longer is there and you're recognizing that for your highest good. Or we no longer want you to necessarily eat 40 pounds of sugar a day because you've noticed something <laughs> that, that you don't feel good after you do that. Now that's your responsibility to make a choice. What are you going to choose? So it, the ego really withdraws from having to take responsibility to change. And our job as human beings, and that's how I would like to to, to keep it light so it's not so heavy is I use humor a lot with people to say, look, by the way, you, this is your responsibility. I'm going to do all I can to support you with this. But, you know, life will support you. That old saying is, that old saying, I always hear that uh, God helps those who help themselves. 
that, that has a deeper meaning in this context here, meaning that I need to show up and make choices to be honest to be sincere in my dealings with myself, my body, my world, to be integrous in my relations with all things. And this isn't new. You know, this is in all the ancient prayers. This is in all the ancient practice. The, the, if you look at Native American uh, cultural living and their prayer work, that's their prayer. You know, I, I am in good relations with all my people. I live in harmony from day to day and praying you, I, I want to be in harmony with the earth and the sky and each other. I want my cells to be in harmony. So what do I have to do as the custodian of my vehicle and my world? How do I, how do I be a good custodian of that? Is, is that's where my ego, sometimes it's like, oh, I'd rather just, I don't know, waste my time doing something super, superfluous and, and, uh, you know, I, I look at my world, uh, Tammy, I look at my world and who I was even three years ago and who I am today. And I'm, and I was never a, a wasteful, highly wasteful person, but I used to get, I was delusional along with, with the mess, most of us <laughs> delusional about myself, about my world. Um, and I have noticed how I have been able to use my time during the day so that I'm the most productive for the most life-giving things in my world. So I'm feeding my own soul and I'm, I'm furthering the work of my soul in this life. And what I'm finding is by doing that, by having that type of hygienic discipline and just how I spend my time and life force throughout a day, I'm the next best opportunity is coming to me to become more, more coherent. You know, whether it's a work opportunity, I meet new associates, I meet new opportunities to be financially prosperous. I'm, I have new opportunities of understandings of what is the next thing for me that's going to allow my body to feel freer and better to be more enjoyable the the relations the people i'm meeting or even having my deepening of my friendships and my relational family members i was just getting richer and more fulfilling so that's the that's the payoff and my ego is my ego and this is what i would counsel all of my clients as a nurse is is your ego is, is actually meant to be a supportive presence that follows your orders. So who is giving the order is your conscious self, your, your adult person who shows up and says, I love life. I am following the order of, of the divine as shown to me through natural law or through nature I'm, I'm allowing this to come into my life and I'm, I'm being the best custodian that I can. And where I'm not, I self-reflect, I self-assess and I, and I allow myself to do better. That's all we really can do as humans with this. So that's how I would go about it. Well, I think you really described, uh, you covered a lot of territory in a short time but I think that you really did describe that beautiful connection of when you are connected to the divine and the role of your spiritual self and your higher self. And as you said, you're supposed to guide that ego part of you, not the other way around. And I think that was a really good point. I think that this interview, Catherine, is one that people should go back and listen to and take careful notes because you really outlined some really important things um, related to that divine connection and the, the energy and how when we're connected to life force, we are actually much more alive. And I just want everybody to know that if you want to reach out to Catherine, uh, you can go to her website. It's CatherineSweets.com. And that's a K-A-T-H-R-Y-N-S, 
W E A S dot com. And you can find out more about Catherine, about the science, about different programs and all kinds of good stuff on her website. So Catherine, before I let you go, is there any last word? Uh, let's see. Last word is I am absolutely uh, appreciative of being here today with you with this opportunity. And I'm very, a very, uh, um, have high hopes and high vision for this unfolding on the planet because it's such a time has come for the unfolding of this. And I know many, many people are going to be uh, blessed with this whole unfolding. Well, thank you so much, Catherine. This is Tammy Passer. Go make it a beautiful day. This information is not intended to provide diagnosis, treatment, or medical advice Products, services, information, and other content provided in this broadcast, including information that may be provided in this broadcast directly or by linking to third-party websites, are provided for informational purposes only. Please consult with a physician or other healthcare professional regarding any medical or health-related diagnosis or treatment options. You've been listening to Women Innovators with Tammy Patzer. To learn more, please go to womeninnovatorsradio.com. And please do subscribe and share to spread the big messages and big missions to change the world.